Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Bob Barber, here with your next Rapture Resurrection Report. The report that analyzes certain unique data that points to the Rapture Resurrection event. Daniel's 70th week and the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at His second coming. So, if information like this sounds good to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now. Because we have more reports coming out dealing with the new information in this chart. Now, family, in today's report, we're going to be talking about the newly updated chart that I have in front of you right here. I'm sure you noticed by now we have many new celestial signs that we have added to this chart because we have new data coming in. And it all points to Daniel's 70th week at our doorstep and the Rapture Resurrection event. And when I get done explaining this chart, you are going to be immensely excited. Now, before we get started, please just take a moment, hit that thumbs up button. It helps push this video throughout YouTube so more people can see this information. More believers can see it and get excited about the Lord's return. So if you hit that thumbs up button, we would so greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, without no more further ado, let's get into it. Now, what I'm going to do now is rebuild the entire chart right in front of you so that way you can understand the whole thing and i'm going to focus just on the main signs i'm not going to get into all the solar eclipses and blood moons because there is so much information there rabbit trails all over the place and even in the main signs i'm going to show you there are deep dives in every single one of them that we will have to save for another video in this video we are just going to cover the main message of what god has been trying to tell us here about this celestial parade that began in 2014 and will end in 2031. Sound good? So let's get into it. Now let's start with the center of the chart right here on the left side. As you can see, this is the Gregorian calendar with all the yellow numbers that runs from 2014 through 2031. Under that we have the Hebrew calendar, which is in the blue lettering and numbers. And then under that we have the Christian calendar in the white lettering and numbers. And then under the Christian year count we have the actual year count. We believe this to be the actual Hebrew calendar. Now this is a 17 year total timeline. And this 17 year timeline is broken up into three sectors. Sector 1, which is the first three years of this timeline. Sector 2, which makes up the next seven years after that. And Sector 3, which is the final seven years of this 17-year timeline. So this 17-year timeline is broken down into the numbers 3, 7, and 7. The number 3, which is a representation of divine completion. Finished, lesser to 7. Then the number 7, of course, means finished, perfection, complete. It's also a representation of God's perfect judgment. The seven trumpets, for example. Seven bowls of wrath. So we have three years, seven years, and seven years, which is a total of 17 years. And according to the Bible, the number 17 represents overcoming the enemy, complete victory. And according to this chart, what do we see happening here at the end of the 17-year timeline? The second coming of Jesus Christ, where the Bible says he will destroy all of his enemies on the earth with the brightness of his coming. The Bible says that a sharp sword will proceed out of his mouth, and at that point he will have complete victory over all of his adversaries. At the end of the 17-year timeline in 2031, when Jesus returns to the earth to set up his millennial reign, thus bringing an end to the 17-year timeline. Now, to further confirm what I just showed you, we need to go back to the beginning of this timeline. And what I'm going to do is remove everything from this timeline and quickly rebuild it right in front of your own eyes so that way you can understand the breakdown of the first three years, the second seven years, and the final seven years of this timeline. And by doing this, we will be able to give you a solid educational guess of when the tribulation can begin and when the rapture resurrection can take place. 
Now, since we understand this whole timeline is broken up into three sectors, it's a total 17 year timeline, I want to relabel these time frames with something that's more suitable to help us understand what's going on here. So instead of calling it sector one, two, and three, I'm going to relabel them to a pre-warning time frame, a warning time frame, and Daniel's 70th week time frame. Now, if you follow me, you'll see why this is divided up into these three sectors. And what I'm going to do is remove all the signs on top and just rebuild this whole thing with the main signs. First, we have a three and a half year pre-warning time frame that started with the beginning of the Blood Moon Tetrad in April 2014, where we saw four Blood Moons fall on Passover and Tabernacles, Passover and Tabernacles in 2014-2015. Now, we have seen this happen before back in 1967-68 marking Israel's Yom Kippur War, and also back in 1949-1950, marking the rebirth of corporate Israel. So every time this Tetrad sequence shows up, it is a warning that God is about to do a major move with Israel. And as you can see in this chart right here, we can see this has taken place eight times now since Jesus walked the earth. And in 2014 and 15, that was the eighth occurrence. Eight is a number of new beginnings. So this was a sign from God. He is about to give Israel a new beginning here on the earth with the beginning of his millennial reign coming in 2031. And this is confirmed because none of these other blood moon tetrads were accompanied by other major celestial signs like this one was. For example, with the solar eclipse on the sun one marking a new beginning first day of the year you see a picture of new beginnings there and also the Bethlehem star which also marked the beginning of Jesus on the earth just like it did almost 2,000 years ago so this whole three-year pre-warning sequence 2014 to 2017 was a warning of a new beginning that is coming at the end of this timeline in 2030-2031. And since it has a picture of beginnings in the sequence, it also marks the beginning of this timeline itself that goes for 17 years, from 2014 to 2031. Now after the pre-warning period for three and a half years, we enter the next sector of the 17-year timeline and that is the seven year warning time frame. And we see a picture of a seven count of warning in the Bible before God pours out his wrath. We see that in the book of Genesis where Noah and his family and the animals were in the ark for seven days before God poured out his wrath with the flood on the earth. We also see this in the book of Joshua where the Israelites march around Jericho seven times before blowing the trumpets and God pours out his wrath on Jericho where the walls of Jericho fell and the Israelites took the city. So imagine being in Jericho watching this countdown of seven times as they went around the city just as we are right now in the seven year warning watching this countdown of seven years come to an end where the tribulation will take place after this. This is the exact same seven year warning that we saw in the Bible with the story of Joseph. Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. A seven year warning to prepare for the seven years of famine that was ahead. And the seven years of famine that we see ahead of us here right now is the seven year tribulation, Daniel's 70th week. Now everybody, let's break down this seven year warning that's about to end here in a few weeks. This seven year warning started on the Feast of Trumpets, September 23rd, 2017, and that day was marked with the Revelation 12 sign. Revelation chapter 12 says that there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And this is exactly what happened that year. A total of 12 stars between stars and planets combined to form a crown of 12 stars with the Leo constellation above her head. She was clothed in the sun and the moon was at her feet. And what really brings this whole sign home was the fact that Jupiter, which is known as the king planet, was in a retrograde motion within the womb of Virgo for nine months up until this day. And on the Feast of Trumpets, 
Jupiter exited the womb of this Virgo constellation right between her legs, symbolizing the birth of the man-child. So this was the only time this completed celestial sequence ever took place. There have been ones like it, but she never had a crown of 12 stars and a planet that was in a retrograde motion in the womb for nine months before or after this particular sign on this date. This here is a sign of the rapture. If you continue to read, it says, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads, and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast into the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up heart podso, raptured unto god and to his throne that will be us the church the body of christ so here we have a massive rapture sign that represents the body of Christ getting taken out of here at the rapture resurrection right before the tribulation begins. And it was the very first sign to kick off this seven year warning sequence that we are currently in right now. So this is how God labels the seven year warning. It's a seven year warning that the rapture resurrection is about to take place, the tribulation is about to begin, and he marks it by kicking it off with the Revelation 12 sign right at the beginning of the seven year warning. Right on day one, he is saying, hey, seven years from today, the rapture resurrection is going to take place and the tribulation is going to begin. Or let me explain it like this. If you give somebody a 10 day warning, do you come back to them in the middle of the 10 day warning on day five to inform them what this 10 day warning was all about? No you would declare it from day one at the beginning of the warning. So you'll understand what the entire warning time is warning you of. And in the Revelation 12 sign, it encompasses everything. Essentially, it's a celestial snapshot of what happens at the end of the Age of Grace with the Rapture Resurrection event and the entirety of Daniel's 70th week. This one sign tells the whole story. This is why God placed this sign on day one it identifies the entirety of this seven year warning that we are in the midst of right now. Now, I have something to show you in the Bible that confirms everything that I'm telling you right here. We just saw a celestial sequence that depicted the birth of the man child at the Revelation 12 sign on September 23rd, 2017. Even though nobody was actually born, it was just a typology showing the coming birth of the man child. But what I'm about to show you is this sign actually followed a biblical protocol that deals with a woman when she gives birth to a man-child. And that's in Leviticus 12, 1 through 3. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days. So what happened here with the Revelation 12 sign? A woman gave birth to a man-child on September 23rd, 2017. The Bible says, then she shall be unclean seven days. And in this case, seven years, a biblical week, seven years. Are you making the connections? And then it goes on to say, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, she shall be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And we being the corporate man child, how does this apply to us? How are we circumcised? How are we physically manipulated? Well, the Bible says our flesh is changed from mortal to immortality through a circumcision made without hands, just like our spirits received a circumcision made without hands. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we had a spiritual rebirth. Philippians 3.3 3, For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit. 
and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Colossians 2.11 says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. This is a spiritual circumcision that circumcised our spirit and brought it back to life, sealed it until the day of redemption. So if our spirit had to be circumcised by the Holy Spirit, wouldn't it make sense that our flesh would also have to be circumcised by the Holy Spirit? Of course. And that circumcision takes place at the rapture resurrection, giving us a new glorified body to match the glorified spirit that we were given previously before the rapture. So this seven year warning that we are in the midst of right now that got kicked off by the Revelation 12 sign on day one is also the seven days of uncleanliness for the woman. And then on the eighth day, the man child is circumcised. The physical application of this is the removal of the foreskin from the male child. But the spiritual corporate application of this is the rapture resurrection for the corporate man child, the church, the body of Christ. Now, the next thing we see in this timeline is right in the middle of this seven year warning in 2020. And we all know what happened in 2020. There was a blood moon tetrad of P number of blood moons that took place in the confines of the year 2020. And this has never happened before and it will never happen again. And on top of that, there was also another Bethlehem star that took place that same year on December 21st, the winter solstice, further signifying the significance of the middle of the seven year warning. Now, what can this mean? Well, at the beginning of the seven year warning, we saw a picture of the rapture resurrection take place, warning us what's going to happen at the beginning of the tribulation. But what does this Bethlehem star in the middle of the seven year warning warning us of? I believe it's warning us of the resurrection of the two witnesses that happens at the midpoint of the seven year tribulation that takes place in the next and final seven year sector of the 17 year timeline. You see how these events are aligning on this chart. First you have the warning of the event in the first seven years, then the execution of the event in the next seven years. Now family, everything I showed you so far evidently shows us that we are about to go home. This seven year warning is here for a reason. And there are still multitudes and multitudes who are still lost on the earth. So with that being said, please take a moment to watch this next quick clip to see what you can do to help reach these final lost souls before the rapture resurrection takes place. And I'll see you right back after this quick break. Hey you, listening right now, do you feel that tug in your heart right now to do something to help reach the lost, to help lead more people to the saving grace of Jesus Christ? But you don't know where to start, who to team up with, or how you should go about doing it. And especially if you want to do it on a large scale. Are you that person where God did not give you your own church, your own pulpit, your own YouTube channel, or even the time to go out and be a missionary or stand on a street corner, but instead he blessed you with some wealth. The Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8, when it comes to building the kingdom, there are those who plant and then there are those who water. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So you have the investor and the worker and everybody receives the same reward. When you invest into the body of Christ through Feed My Sheep Today, you are financially sowing a seed, essentially planting it into the work of the missionary and the missionary is watering that seed, cultivating it as it grows. So as you can see, in order to build the body of Christ, it takes an investor and it takes a worker. You are the investor. And here's the best part about it. You will receive the same rewards as a missionary at the judgment seat of Christ, because it says that the planter and the water are one, one in the same job. So they both get rewarded the same and family, there are millions and millions of people just like this out there that still need to be reached. 
and the only way that they can be reached is through your financial support. Yes, I know. Unfortunately, it takes money to buy all of the Bibles, the humanitarian relief aid, and on top of all that, provide all the transportation that's needed to get all of this to these areas. The good news is we won't be needing money much longer to do this work. But until then, this is how we have to do it. And family, the word's getting out about what we're doing. There are large crowds gathering everywhere we go. The Holy Spirit is orchestrating this whole thing. And when our missionaries show up to these areas, they need to be ready with enough Bibles and everything. The last thing any of us want to see is that one new believer in the area that doesn't get a free Bible when everybody else did because we ran out of Bibles. So the more Bibles we are able to buy, the less likely that is to happen. Have you heard enough? Are you ready to make your impact? This is how you do it. All you have to do is go to our official website. It's feedmysheeptoday.org. Link is in the description box below. There you can give by credit card, PayPal, bank draft, and many other online options as well like Google Pay and more. And family, check this out. Now you can easily convert crypto and stocks into a donation as well. Any stock, any crypto, as easy as one, two, three, and you're done. Or if you don't want to mess with any of this, all you have to do is just pick up your smartphone and text SHEEP to 801-801, and you can very easily give right there. Don't like giving online? No problem. Send your support by mail to Feed My Sheep Today, P.O. Box 568, Cherville, Indiana, 46375. Want to make a big impact but don't have the money to do it right now? Just become an easy feed monthly sustainer. We greatly need monthly sustainers. This allows Feed My Sheep Today to plan for next month by making solid commitments to the leadership in these areas that we will be visiting because we know that the funds will be there at this point next month to take care of their needs. Plus, it's easier for you. Just set it and forget it. And this frees you up to do other things for the Lord while this is working on automatic on your behalf. And you can easily make changes at any time. And make sure to track your investment by following all of our other social media platforms. Links are in the description box below. Feed My Sheep today is ready to partner with you to make your impact in God's kingdom today. Thank you all so much for the many years of support. Let's finish strong together and may God bless you all. Now family, get ready for the second half of this thing because it's going to blow your mind. It just keeps getting better and better and better. Okay, let's get into it. In 2023, there were two celestial bodies that passed through the Revelation 12 constellation on the Feast of Trumpets around September 18th. One was a comet called Nishimura, and the name means Exalted Prince, the Exalted Man-Child. And at the same time, there was an asteroid that passed through the Revelation 12 sign, and that was called Child, the Child Asteroid. So what was God trying to tell us here? That's easy. He was reminding us what the seven-year warning was all about. Look at the name of these two celestial bodies, Nishimura which means exalted prince, the exalted man-child. And by the way, Nishimura was all over the news last year. Remember that? And then we have the child asteroid, which that name speaks for itself. And they pass through the womb of the Revelation 12 sign. And a quick note, if you didn't know, the Revelation 12 sign takes place every year at the Feast of Trumpets. Virgo, the virgin star constellation, is clothed in the sun, and the moon is at her feet. That happens every year at Rosh Hashanah, Tishri 1, the Feast of Trumpets. Except in 2017, there was a special arrangement that gave her a crown of 12 stars with the addition of two extra planets within the midst of the Leo constellation. So like I was saying, these two celestial bodies passed through the womb of the Virgo constellation at the Feast of Trumpets in 2023, thus symbolizing the birth of the man-child because both of these celestial bodies 
exited the womb of Virgo, which is the exact same thing that happened on day one of this warning sign back on September 23rd, 2017, where we saw the planet Jupiter exit the Revelation 12 sign between her legs, also at the Feast of Trumpets. Now we have seen two celestial sequences of a woman giving birth that happened twice within this seven year warning period. And since it happened twice, that's a confirmation that the physical manifestation of this warning will take place in the next and final seven year sector. The Bible says it takes two to make an agreement. When two or more agree, I'm in the midst of them. One could put a thousand to flight, two could put 10,000 to flight. And a picture of the birth of the man child happened twice within this same seven year warning period. So what does that signify? That the rapture resurrection is about to take place here at the beginning of the next and final seven year sector. And the last thing I want to point out is God placed this sign right at the beginning of the seventh year, which is the final year of the seven year warning period. God was declaring from the heavens saying, hey, you have one year left before the birth of the man child and the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. And God is just following his own protocol. He is giving us a one year warning that a birth is about to take place. Because in the Bible, God gave Abraham a one year warning that his son Isaac was going to be born. Genesis 18:10. And the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. You hear that? One year from now and your wife Sarah will have a son. God's one year warning before a significant birth takes place. There you go. And God gave us our one year warning of the birth of the man child that takes place at the rapture resurrection event almost one year ago on the Feast of Trumpets with the passing of the child asteroid through the womb of Virgo and also the Nishimura comet passing through as well which stands for Exalted Prince, the Exalted Man Child. And that was almost one year ago, and the seven year warning comes to an end, October 2nd at the Feast of Trumpets. Yeah, that's a super high watch time, family. And let me put something into perspective for you. If this is the case, if God is going to bring forth the physical birth of the man child at the beginning of the next seven year period, then that would mean that we would have had to have been in some pretty heavy birth pains within the last 12 months. Um, October 7th, when Israel was invaded, where the Israeli leadership declared this event marked the beginning of the final birth pains leading them into the time of Jacob's trouble. So yes, I would say that confirms it. We are in the final birth pains. This runaway train is moving now and nobody can put an end to it except for the Antichrist who shows up after the rapture resurrection. Now before we move on to the final sign of the seven year warning which is going to be essentially the finale of this whole thing, Nishimura was in the constellation of the dog known as Canis Major since its inception. But then something began to happen. About 30 days out from Feast of Trumpets, Nishimura began exiting the constellation of the dog for the first time and headed towards the Revelation 12 sign. And it passed right through the womb of the Virgo constellation right at the Feast of Trumpets. And then Nishimura retreated into the constellation of the boat. And we checked on the Stellarium Nishimura never leaves the constellation of the boat ever again. We checked even beyond a thousand year millennial reign. It just stays there in a retrograde motion. So what does this all mean? I believe this is the redemption of the Gentiles because Nishimura came from the constellation of the dog, Canis Major. And Gentiles were referred to as dogs in the Bible. We see that in Matthew 15 verse 26. And then Nishimura, also known as the Exalted Prince Manchild, finally leaves as habitation of the dog constellation where it's been ever since its inception. It's the perfect picture of Gentiles. In Ephesians 2 verse 12 talks about that Gentiles were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. Dogs. Gentiles. 
This is why Nishimura has always been in the Dog Constellation. But then something changed. Nishimura, the Exalted Prince, Manchild, left the Dog Constellation for the first time and quickly passed through the Leo Constellation representing the Crown and then passed right through the Revelation 12 Constellation. Right on the day of the Feast of Trumpets, 2023. Which is a picture of the body of Christ, a man-child, being birthed through Israel, which the body of Christ consists mostly of Gentiles. The redemption for Gentiles. Thus signifying the completed gift of salvation for Gentiles. Through the completed creation of the man-child, the body of Christ, at the rapture resurrection. And then after that, Nishimura went right into the constellation of the boat. And the boat, of course, represents Jesus Christ. The Ark, like Noah's Ark, we are safe inside the Ark of Jesus Christ forever. And this is why Nishimura never leaves the boat constellation ever again. And what about the child asteroid? Is there anything else outside of just the name of the asteroid that's significant? Well, if you remember, it wasn't just a child asteroid that passed through the womb of Virgo at this time. There was actually an entire host of asteroids also passed through the Revelation 12 sign during the Feast of Trumpets that had biblical words, biblical names, and words that had biblical meanings attached to them. And they all pointed towards the biblical narrative of Daniel's 70th week. God didn't just throw one rock at this whole celestial sign to get our attention. He emptied out his whole bag. Now the next sign I want to talk about is the one we just went through. We're all familiar with it. It is known as the sign of Jonah. And this is marked with the solar eclipse that took place on April 8th that slashed right through America. And the path of this eclipse passed through so many different towns and cities with prophetic names like Nineveh, Jonah, Gord, Rapture Harmony. A matter of fact, a whole multitude of Ninevehs had passed through and much, much more, all pointing towards the story of Jonah and coming judgment. And if you look at the map of America, it kind of resembles a whale. And what's really interesting, during this entire seven year period, there have been a series of solar eclipses that passed over America, forming the Hebrew letters Aleph, and the Tav, the Aleph is the A, which represents Alpha, and the Tav, which is an X, which represents the Omega. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. God essentially put his signature right on the top of America. God was essentially telling America, hey, I gave you your beginning, and now your end is near. And the world needs to take notice, because when this happened, World War III will go into hyperdrive. America is not going to become great again. That's why these signs are here. It's just tribulation ahead. And I believe God put this symbol on America to mark when America goes down, that is essentially the beginning of the tribulation. Now, some people are going to say, hey, Bob, you know what? All these celestial signs, they're not for us. I get it. These are all for the Jews. But the Jews aren't watching them right now. We are. And what we are doing is we are watching these signs because we know God is about to start dealing with the Jews during Daniel's 70th week. And if Daniel's 70th week is about to begin, then by default, we are taken out of here at the rapture resurrection. That is why we watch these signs. And this is why God put the A right over the top of America. Because a lot of people don't know this, but half the Jews on the planet are in America and the other half are all in Israel, with a few stragglers spread about the world. So was that sign about the fall of America? Sure it was, but it was also a signal to the Jews that, hey, the time of Jacob's trouble is about to begin. Now, family, we've seen a celestial sign that kicked off this whole seven-year warning period with Revelation 12 sign, the P number of Blood Moon Tetrad in 2020, along with the Bethlehem star in the midst of it. The Nishimura comet and the child asteroid at the Feast of Trumpets 2023, marking the one-year warning of the end of the seven-year warning, including the sign of Jonah. And yes, there were a bunch of solar eclipses and lunar eclipses, but I did not want to include them in the chart here because it'll get too confusing. I'm just focusing on the main signs here, okay? So the question is now, what is the big celestial sign that marks the end of this whole seven year period. And according to what we've seen already, whatever it is, it has to be really profound. And here it is, folks. 
Now, we were not even aware of this sign until only up to a few weeks ago, and that is the Star of Jacob. Now, what's so significant about this sign? Well, there are multiple reasons why this sign is where it's at. First reason, it falls on September 27, 927, and right away we think of the Daniel 927 seven-year agreement that transcends over the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation. So we have the star of Jacob falling on the day that represents the seven-year agreement that transcends over Daniel's 70th week. Daniel 927, September 27, 927. I know, you can't make this stuff up. But here's the thing, this sign actually has a dual meaning. Actually, I would say a triple meaning. You see, the star of Jacob was a red giant that went supernova almost 2,000 years ago. That's right. This star went nova right about the time of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ when the Messiah was cut off from Israel at the end of the 69th week. But because of the distance of the star, it took almost 2,000 years for the light of this supernova to reach us here on the earth where it will actually be visible for us to see just like Jesus being the light of the world who walked the earth almost 2,000 years ago ascended into heaven and is going to return and he will be visible for us to see when we meet him in the air at the rapture resurrection both lights took place at the same time and none of us living today were able to see them and now both lights will reach the earth around the same time when we will see both of them and we see a picture of this in numbers 24 17 that talks about the characteristics of the star of jacob it says i shall see him but not now i shall behold him but not nigh doesn't that sound like what we're looking at right here with the star of jacob the light of that supernova took place almost 2000 years ago None of us were there to see it. We just have to have faith that that happened. Just like Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. We didn't see it 2,000 years ago. We weren't there. We just have faith that it happened. But the proof of this supernova is about to manifest here on the earth when the light of that event reaches us on September 27th of this month. This verse goes on to say, There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. This is the fulfillment of what happens at Jesus' second coming to the earth to set up his millennial reign. The star of Jacob wasn't visible 2,000 years ago, but it will be visible here soon. And Jesus, who ascended to heaven 2,000 years ago, will also manifest in the air when he returns for the church at the rapture resurrection. Essentially, both lights manifested back then, and not too long from now, both lights will manifest in the heavens for us to see at the rapture resurrection. Now, the star of Jacob has one more additional meaning, and it has everything to do with the third and final sector of the 17-year time frame, the next seven years, which will be the seven-year tribulation, Daniel's 70th week. And there are other celestial signs in this next sector that confirms that the next sector will be the seven-year tribulation which means the rapture resurrection is at hand. Now folks, we are now entering sector three, the third and final sector of this 17 year timeline, the seven year tribulation. Now, the next celestial sign we're gonna look at are three blood moons that fall on Purim three years in a row. The first one actually already happened this year on March 24th. Then the next one will fall on March 13th, 2025, and the third and final one will fall on March 3rd in 2026. And why is this significant? Well, first of all, Purim, we all know, deals with the story of Esther. Esther, who's a Jewish woman who got married to the king of Persia, she kept her faith a secret from him, but then eventually she revealed it in order to save all the Jewish people from total annihilation. And the fact that this sign is taking place during a time where the Jews will face total annihilation from the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's no coincidence. This is a huge warning for Israel. 
And what's interesting is this sign is completed right before the midpoint of the tribulation. And what happens at the midpoint of the tribulation? The two witnesses are killed. And what does the Bible say that happens right after they are killed? Revelation 11 verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And what do the Jews do to celebrate Purim? They wear extravagant costumes and they exchange gift baskets. Hmm. Yeah, I know. You can't make this stuff up. So this can represent the time the two witnesses are killed, perhaps maybe around Purim, which would be about mid-trib. So it's interesting that these Purim blood moons are here. And like in the story of Esther, they were facing total annihilation. And going forward from mid-trib, the Jews will face total annihilation again. He will have his army surround Jerusalem so no Jews can get out, and then he will try to force them to take the mark of the beast. This is why Jesus warned them in Matthew 24. If you're on the housetop, don't go back down to get anything out of your house. Get out. If you're in the fields, don't go back into Jerusalem. That's the last place you want to be during this time. So ultimately, these blood moons are a warning of what's coming mid-trib. And just think about it when they're building that temple and they see those blood moons in progress, they're going to run to the rabbis and say, Hey, rabbi, those blood moons are a warning for us. I thought we're in this time of peace and everything was great. So what are those blood moons warning us of? And the rabbi be like, don't worry about it. Yep, it's coming folks. Those blood moons are right where they belong. And another thing I want to point out is the Bethlehem star that took place back in the middle of the previous seven year period on December 21st, 2020. The pattern we're seeing is whatever celestial sign manifested in the seven year warning was actually marking what was going to happen in the next seven year period and when it was going to take place. So here we have the Bethlehem star in the middle of the seven year warning period. And why did God place that there? Well, we know in the next seven year period, right in the middle, what takes place, the death and resurrection of the two witnesses. The Bethlehem star stands for a new beginning and the two witnesses will have a new beginning when they are resurrected and caught up into heaven at the midpoint of the tribulation, Revelation chapter 11. And this Bethlehem star also marks the new beginning of the Antichrist when he goes from being the man of sin to the son of perdition. And Satan always tries to mimic God. He always tries to mimic Jesus by calling himself the morning star. So it's no surprise that during the seven year warning period, we see the Bethlehem star marking the midpoint of the seven year warning because it's showing us what's going to happen at the midpoint of the following seven year period. All right, family, we are now heading towards the end of this timeline and we are now going to look at the final sign that will take place before Jesus returns for his second coming at the end of this entire timeline. And that is a super celestial sequence that takes place at the Feast of Trumpets in 2030. And this celestial sequence has the return of Jesus Christ and the establishment of the beginning of his millennial reign written all over it. And what's interesting is it shows up right at the six year mark, the one year warning before the return of Jesus Christ. And folks, this is right where it belongs because what happened at the completion of year six of the seven year warning in the previous seven years? God gave us a massive sign with the Nishimura Comet and the child asteroid passing through the Revelation 12 sign along with a whole host of other celestial bodies passing through the Revelation 12 sign. And here we are again at the end of the tribulation with a focus on the Revelation 12 sign which is a woman giving birth. So the question is, why does God want us to focus so much on the Revelation 12 sign one year before the end of each of these seven year periods? It's because, like I said before, it's a picture of a woman giving birth. Just like we saw at the end of the seven year warning, we're seeing the same thing here take place at the end of the seven year tribulation. A sign in the heavens that marks a one year warning declaring the second return of Jesus Christ to the earth to set up his millennial reign. 
And now we see here at the end of the seven year tribulation in 2030, another super sign dealing with the Revelation 12 sign signifying that one year from this point, something major is going to take place, which we know as the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and also a mass resurrection event of everybody that needs to be resurrected at this point. Another corporate physical birth. So let's do a quick breakdown of the sign. I'll give you a much clearer picture of it right here. So what you're looking at right here is a celestial alignment that takes place at the Feast of Trumpets in 2030. And everything in this celestial sequence is announcing the second coming of Jesus Christ to set up his millennial reign on the earth. If you go to the top of the screen, you see that Mars, which represents Satan, the god of war, Allah in Islam, is right by the mouth of Leo, the lion. Jesus being the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus will simply open his mouth and destroy all of Satan's armies. In Revelation 19:15, it says, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he would smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So this is why Mars is in position right before the mouth of the lion. Just like the armies of the world will be in position right before the mouth of Jesus at his second coming. And then when you go down a little bit, you have Mercury, Venus, and the Sun right at the head of Virgo. Of course, Virgo represents corporate Israel on the earth at Jesus' second coming. And Mercury representing Michael and all of his angels, the armies of heaven. Venus representing the saints. And the Sun representing Jesus, the light of the world. All coming to the earth where the Bible says that he will return to the earth with all the armies of heaven. And what's interesting in this artwork, Virgo is looking up, not forward, not down, not to the side. She's looking up. Makes you wonder why God calls the artist to do this. You know why? Because Israel is going to be looking up when Jesus returns to the earth with all the armies of heaven. And the last piece of the celestial sequence is right at the very bottom where we see Jupiter go into the constellation of the scales, known as Libra. And what does this mean? Jupiter, representing Jesus, is called the king planet. Jesus, who is the king of kings, lord of lords. And the fact that the king planet that represents Jesus is in the scales, this represents the sheep and goat judgment at the end of the tribulation when jesus separates the sheep from the goats he puts the sheep on his right and the goats on his left just like here in the scales you have a right plate and a left plate so like i said this entire celestial sequence takes place at the feast of trumpets in 2030 one year before the projected time of jesus return to the earth and notice how i use the word projected because we don't know exactly when the rapture resurrection event and the kickoff of Daniel's 70th week and when it ends actually takes place. We know when all the signs in the heavens pointing at these events take place, but we don't know when God will actually execute the physical manifestation that all these signs are pointing at. Because there is always that one variable in the Bible where Jesus says in Matthew 24:22. Lest these days be shortened, no flesh would be saved. What are these days? The days of Daniel's 70th week. So basically, God can shave a little bit of time off the beginning, which means we'll be here a little longer, or he can shave all the time off at the end, which means we leave right at the Feast of Trumpets, and Jesus comes back a lot earlier at the end, or he shaves a little bit off both ends. We don't know how this is going to play out. All we know is that these celestial signs are pointing at the fact that this seven-year warning is coming to an end and the next seven years contains Daniel's 70th week. So family, I hope this study blessed you. And if it did, please share this with your networks. You're going to be encouraging the body of Christ with this information and encouraging the body of Christ about the blessed hope is one of the things that we will be rewarded for at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. You will be rewarded just by clicking share. And family, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button right now because we have a lot more reports coming out that are going to bless you immensely. If you like this, you're going to love what we have coming out next. So may God bless you all and hang in there for we are almost finished. Amen.
Amen.